Talk to me about the revenue number, because that's an estimate. Yes. And uh, this is not an estimate. So let's say, for example, this property number three, for example. So uh, remember, it's the same as um, on the overview page. This is last twelve months of revenue. Yeah. So this is how much they made between July of twenty twenty until June of twenty twenty one. So how we pick that up is firstly we we get the information from three different sources. So we firstly we scrape from Airbnb and VRBO. Secondly, we have data partnerships with channel managers and student property managers who provide us with their properties data. Oh. And thirdly, from um, the users themselves who upload their properties to my properties. We also get their calendar information from there. Um, but majority of the the listings, um, maybe they're not managed by a property manager or, or they're not an Airbnb client, we scrape it from Airbnb. This subject right. is interesting yeah. for me because, uh, yeah, I'm curious. What, what would happen in the scenarios where the host blocks it or yes. two listings are connected and you book on one, the other one gets blocked? Or... Uh, guest um, books offline. They book for a week and then they book for another month offline. So the host just blocks the calendar, all these fringe situations. Yeah. So um, interestingly enough, Airbnb actually doesn't different between host blocks and guest reservations. Right. They just bulk it together as unavailable. Yeah. So it's up to our algorithm to determine whether it's a host block or a, a guest reservation. How we do that is by looking at booking signals. So we look at the, the length of time. So for example, if the average length of stay in Medellin is about three days and uh, it's around a three day booking, um, maybe we'll pick that up as a reservation rather than okay. a host block. Also, okay. we look at booking time. So how far in advance guests are booking. In this case, when the dates change from available status to unavailable status. Um, so if it changed, maybe the, the, booking lead, the average booking lead time in Medellin is two weeks in advance. And uh, this set of three dates uh, changed from available to unavailable um, two weeks ago, two weeks before the starting date, I mean. And so we might pick that up as a reservation as well. Of course, there are instances where we get it wrong. Like for example, if a host behaves out of the norm, um, let's say they wanna use their own for a weekend to throw a party and they block it on the, uh, on the calendar um, three weeks in advance. We might pick that up as a reservation, even though it's a host block. But um, in general, we have a 95% accuracy across the board, across all markets, um, in determining whether something is a reservation or a host block. And that's why we have the two other um, data sources, which is from channel managers, property managers, and also from AirDNA users who upload their properties to supplement this data. So we don't rely just on the scrapers. Oh, hey, can I ask you a favor? Click the red subscribe button below and the bell next to it for notifications because it will make me very happy and encourage me to make more videos. Thank you. How do you know you're 95% accurate? Um, just, I, I guess by checking how the scrape data is, again, property managers and channel managers data that we receive. For those properties that you're 100% sure on. Yeah, exactly. And, and yeah. And to answer your question, if a property is uh, on different booking platforms or um, a guest reserves directly with a host and they just block it, it doesn't matter. As long as, is, firstly, if the calendars are synced, like if an Airbnb calendar is synced with a VRBO calendar, it should automatically block it in another platform once they receive a booking in right. one. And, and we just pick it up based on the, the number of days, the, the length, and also on the, the date that it changed from available to unavailable status, rather than what the host actually does. Got you. Okay. Yeah, when I did my review on you guys back three years ago, I, I did decide that your numbers looked really accurate. But, um, and I think they are accurate, but I, when I'm going in to purchase a property, and and I the host actually gave me their data <clears throat> for the last two years, which was super interesting. Assuming it wasn't okay. photoshopped, their data was uh, you have them earning twenty eight thousand, I think, and they actually earned thirty five thousand. So okay. pretty close, off by about twenty fifteen percent. Um, okay. So when you say that you're accurate by 95%, mm -hmm. 
within what variance? Uh, across the board. So across all properties. I mean, so all like. I mean, like if you do like a statistical analysis, you might say like you know the next card to come out on the blackjack table is going to be a queen of hearts. Um, we are ninety five percent certain of this but we have a variance of like four you know 14 percent we might not be right you know 14 plus or minus 14 percent time limit. does that make sense yeah so like uh oh. yeah i mean to be honest i'm not a statistician so i can send you an article oh, that please, yeah. uh which helps explain maybe a little bit better about how we get our data the sources and how we determine accuracy Maybe this would be a better explanation. Great. Yes, I'll have a, yeah. I'll have a look at that. Yeah.